Hello and welcome to this CNBC TV 18 special coverage. I'm Kritika Saxena. It has been more than 100 days since Natarajan Chandrasekharan took charge of the salt to software conglomerate Tata Group. He's also very fondly called N. Chandrasekhar. His elevation to the top post comes at a time when the 150 year old group is still nursing itself back from a prolonged boardroom and now legal battle with its now ousted chairman, Saris Mystery. Coupled with that, the legacy hotspots, the debt laden and non performing companies within the group continue to remain a spot of bother. The warm-up period for the marathon man is clearly over now and we are here to assess in the next half an hour what exactly lies ahead. We take stock of Chandra's performance in the la last 100 days and what lies ahead. Remember, he completed 100 days on the 2nd of June. To talk about the challenges and speed bumps that lie in front of him, joining in now to discuss this further is Amit Chandra, Chandra who is the non-executive director of Tata Sons and Zia Modi of AZB Partners. Uh, thank you, Amit and Zia, for joining in. Uh, the two of you have been very closely associated uh, with the Tata group. Uh, so, Amit, I'm going to uh, start by asking you what the focus has been for Tata Sons and Chandra. According to you, I understand you can't go into specifics, but what do you think the focus has been so far in the last 100 days? It's been over 100 days, yes, but what do you think would be the key area? You know, I think uh, like, a, uh, like a solid marathon that he is, uh, he's focused on building a, a strong uh, foundation for a, for a good long run. Uh, that foundation, I, in my view, has... Uh, focused around building a strong team of uh, leaders who are uh, practitioners and can help him execute his agenda. Um, I think he's uh, built uh, already uh, a few solid, uh, uh, solid exceptional uh, uh, leaders, uh, Saurabh Agarwal, Shubha Mandal, and uh, 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 a few exceptional leaders below them, uh, in addition to uh, the, the current set of people at Tata Sons. Um, and then I think in terms of uh, the agenda, he's made it very clear uh, what his uh, long-term agenda is. Uh, he's uh, spent uh, 100 days uh, trying to uh, meet people across the group, uh, you know, trying to bring the group uh, uh, closer together uh, to leverage its uh, collective strength, uh, to build a much more aspirational mindset uh, amongst uh, operating companies. And I think very importantly to build a framework for much greater rigor in capital allocation um, across the group uh, in order to deliver uh, superior shareholder returns. Chandra is very, very focused on uh, delivering uh, greater shareholder returns, uh, uh, you know, to uh, investors. Um, you know, he's talked about making sure that uh, companies figure out in uh, a folio of top institutional investors. Uh, uh, and I think um, that's the kind of mindset uh, uh, that all of us uh, really appreciate in him. That's a very interesting point you made, Amit, uh, on integration. Let me bring in Zia as well. Now. Zia, how do you make of the last uh, 100 days? Of course, it's been more than 100 days. Uh, any message uh, for Chandra on the strategy or what lies ahead? So, as you know, uh, Chandra is a marathon runner, and I think the first 100 days uh, for him would be not even just getting a warm-up going. So, the message is... Uh, Great job so far, Chandra. Long road ahead. And uh, here's to the one Tata approach that you've adopted. Okay, uh, so both Amit and Zia are talking about how Chandra is a marathon runner. Let's uh, get into specifics now. Uh, Amit, I'm coming back to you. What, according to you, are the speed blocks uh, that Tata Sons needs to focus on right now? No, I think the speed block is, is, is really going to be... Uh, they're going to be both tactical and uh, strategic. Uh, you know, uh, they're going to be uh, uh, difficult decisions uh, uh, to make, and uh, he's he's someone who has the appetite uh, to make those uh, make those decisions. Um, you know, there will be uh, both opportunities um, uh, to uh, you know uh, divest in some cases and to double down uh, in others uh, that I think uh, that he will uh, that he will have to make, and then there will be. Uh, you know, um, uh, there will be decisions to be made uh, to, you know, figure out how to uh, get a lot more out of uh, uh, old investments that have been made, and figure out how to how to get those uh, uh, 
uh, uh, go get that extra uh, mile out of uh, uh, old investments. And I think um, that's uh, where uh, you know where I think uh, uh, he will have to work with uh, operating companies to figure out how to get that extra a mile out of the old investments. And I think uh, that's where the test will lie. Oh, yes. Uh, speaking of tests, uh, Zia Tata Group, of course, has had a difficult year. You have worked closely with them uh, over the last one year. Do you believe Tata Group will be able to put uh, these legal issues behind it? I agree so far it doesn't seem to be that much of a problem. But uh, are you confident that they will be able to put the legal ghost behind it? I think so. Uh, I think they have to. Uh, my own... Uh my own hope is that, you know, uh, both sides sort of come to a sensible solution. Uh, but I think that from the group's point of view, uh, life has certainly moved on. If you look what Chandra is pushing for, it is a return to growth, uh, very focused on return to shareholders, uh, very uh, hard drivers about the synergizing and integration of of Tata companies uh, as as one Tata, as he says. And so I think that, uh, you know, it's uh, really getting back to business as usual when it comes to the opcos. Okay, speaking of business as usual, Amit, how easy do you think the transition has been? And how uh, difficult or easy do you think it has been for integrating Tata Group, bringing 100 plus companies on board to create more integration? What do you think have been the challenges so far? No, I think, uh, you know, uh, my own sense is that uh, the transition has, uh, has been relatively smooth. Uh, Chandra has been an insider. Um, uh, you know, he's someone who's uh, uh, an out-and-out -out Tata man. And uh, uh, I think if we would have got an outsider, uh, it would have uh, been a tougher transition. Uh, being an insider, he knew uh, all the players and knew the Tata ethos, and I think that has made things much, much easier. Zia, do you believe that there uh, are any other legal hurdles that the group may face here onwards? Have there been any conversations about how to avoid any more legal tussles like the last one? I have no idea as to any conversations. And I don't think that there are legal hurdles which are going to stop the path forward uh, for the group. Um, I think that each OPCO is uh, able to do what it used to do before and after. There's no change. Uh, I think the real issue is uh, Chandra putting together all the OPCOs with Tata Sons and also seeing that there is some sense of alignment uh, with the trusts, which have been uh, uh, the subject matter of uh, a lot of focus. So I think his path is... Uh, uh, is well on its way, and I think uh, knowing Chandra, he is fully aware of what he has to do. Okay, so what should be the strategy here, on Given the fact that the case with Mystery isn't completely sorted yet, how can Tata Sons ensure that uh, the brand Tata, which has been intact despite the issues with the last one year, stays that way? I don't know. I have a different view. I'm not sure that... Uh, Brand Tata is not uh, well on its way back, if all, if not already back. I think that uh, I'm I'm not convinced that the court case can uh, hurt Brand Tata. I think Brand Tata is so institutional uh, and so uh, so symptomatic of a good feeling recall uh, by uh, almost any Indian that I think it will. It has survived and will survive past any cases that may come uh, and go here and there. So I'm not sure that, uh, and I think one of the things that Chandra has done actually is to uh, reconnect uh, people with Brand Tata and offer himself up as uh, Brand Tata himself. Uh, and so I think that uh, the brand is not in jeopardy. Okay, uh, point taken, Zia. But uh, Shivam Mandal has uh, just joined the team as Group General Counsel. What, according to you, made Chandra select someone as young as Shiva to handle the legal strategy for the 150-year-old Tata Group? And uh, what do you think the focus should be now? Do you expect there to be an overhaul in the legal strategy under the new General Counsel? 
Well, I think that, you know, the legal strategy for uh, over 15 years has been well managed by Bharat Vasani. I think that Shuva stepping into the GC shoes is, uh, is remarkable simply because uh, one can say that uh, one of the brightest talents in uh, the legal world in India has chosen to go in-house and uh, obviously that is with a large agenda uh, to be uh, very meaningful, to make a huge impact. I think from Chandra's point of view, what he has seen is uh, Shuva's energy, uh, Shuva's familiarity with how Tata. Uh, as I have said before, don't forget that uh, for the 15 plus years that Shuva was at AZB, he worked on Tata Matters with almost every single Tata operating company, so he is no stranger to Bombay House or the world of Tatas. And I think that uh, probably with uh, Shuva taking on the mantle, he will uh, build up his own very strong uh, in-house corporate team, uh, reach out for uh, quality advice to whomever he wishes to lean on. Uh, but I think that Chandra will rely a lot on Shuva for strategy, firefighting, growth, uh, introspection, uh, and that I think is going to be very exciting for sure. Okay, Zia, I mean, I'm going to come back to the point you made earlier. Integration and streamlining is the focus. So, how long do you think this will take? Can I say it'll take about two years to stir the turnaround that Chandra is looking at? And what do you think would be the next step after that? Well, Kritika, this is it's uh, uh, why two years? This is always a continuous uh, journey if you look at. Uh, a great conglomerates like uh, GE, uh, uh, this is a transition that never stops. It never stopped in Jack, uh, uh, you know, Welsh's tenure, and it hasn't stopped in uh, Jeff Immel's tenure. I think uh, uh, we discovered that uh, shareholder value creation is a is a, is a continuous treadmill, uh, and I think uh, it will be a continuous treadmill. Uh, it's a, a marathon, and Chandra will be running this marathon uh, for a long period of time, and uh, uh, I think the journey has just begun. I love the usage of the fact that Chandra is a marathon man and how it ties up into what lies ahead. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Zia Moody and Amit Chandra, for your time. Uh, with that, we head into a very short break, but don't go anywhere. We are Mehta of Sardarabji Tata Trust uh, joins in on the other side. And also joining in will be Rashi Shah of Edelweiss Group. Stay tuned.